Well, Sandy, I feel like we just played, but here we are again. <laughs> I get. I think they like. I think they like Team Eighties. They want to see us keep competing, don't they? Well, it's either that or we're just uh, we're, we're just gluttons for punishment, so we just keep coming back. <laughs> well, this isn't where I expected us to be during Championship Week. I don't think either of us expected to be here. We just got unlucky in our last match, but we're here, and there's an opportunity in front of us. And to get that opportunity, we got to go through two friends of ours. We're really damn good, and we have three TKOs under our belt, so we've kind of earned our way to to keep having these matches. So. This is it. This is the this is the undercard match. So uh, we we unfortunately didn't make it into the championship, but we are the undercards. Which, you know, when you have 32 teams, it's pretty impressive that I think that we've made it here. I can make jokes. Sandy and Jeremy are older than film itself. Between them, there's more years than the Titanic sunk long ago. But that's not what I'm going to do anymore. I promised in my last singles match, you guys are going to see a new Omega. But you're going to still see some of the same old Omega. We want to win today. We want to have our shot to face the loser of the championship in the number one contender spot. So I'm excited, and uh, I just always love playing with you, man. And you know what? The same goes for me. You're my partner till the end. Ride or die, my brother. We're going to do this, and we're going to do it until we got no more trivia left in our bodies. You know what? Somebody said something the other day that, you know, there was a whole whack load of movies that was released before ninth or after 1980. <laughs> well, as far as I'm concerned, there's only a few years after 1980s were done. There's a whole shitload left of, of, of years of movie making before that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you and I have a wealth of knowledge and, and we've been putting it to use in this uh, in this thing, especially you. You're just an absolute genius when it comes to oh. movie, movie trivia. I was going to say that I think Sandy and Jeremy are great. Um, they're great people, great competitors. I really would like to have uh, faced them in the championship match, but uh, here we are. So if we got to get through them to get to the next step, I mean, so be it. We got some good competitors that we're coming up against here, though, and uh, they're, they're friends of ours. This is going to be a, a great match. Uh, what do you say, buddy? What do you say we take one home for, uh, for, for time's sake? Look, I'm happy to be facing these guys. I love Alex and Thomas. You know, Mega Club's one of my favorite teams. You know, I really feel like, you know, Alex is probably going to have some words to say, you know, because he does that. But I still feel like this is a brotherly match. I'm happy to be here. Um, but yeah, I want I want to get I want to keep going here. I, I want to win this one. So let's do it. Let's do it for the 80s. Let's bring it home. Yeah, it's what we got to do. Team 80s have been great this tournament. They've had three TKOs, but we've had two ourselves. And that great come from behind victory against the Alphas that people seem to forget. That's just as impressive. So if this means we got to take out two friends to get a title, get a chance at a title shot, I'm sorry, Team 80s, you're living in the past. Omega Club's the future, and we're coming for that goal. All right, Case. As we saw, we just got done hearing from these competitors, and they are hyped up because this is a friendly match. And after seeing how the singles undercard led up to the singles championship and how great that event was, this one is just preparing me even more because we had 64, I, I always say this, 64 players, 32 teams, not 34, hey. and now we're down to the final four. We have a championship with two teams, and then we have third place with these two teams, and this is going to be an incredible match. It's going to be a friendly one. What do you expect coming out of this? I expect nothing but a great match. We've seen these teams both compete. They're both three and one. That means they've won three times against some really big com uh, competition already in this uh, league. They won their own bracket, and if, if you see every single bracket in this tournament, all brackets have great teams, multiple teams that uh, that could have won the bracket, but these are the guys who won their respective bracket. And yes, they came short in the semifinals, but it came down to the very last round in the case of a mega club to the very last question. Uh, because if, if Big Picture hadn't hit the five-pointer, Omega Club would have been in the final and we would have seen Big Picture here. So it just shows these teams are really good and I just can't wait to see these guys uh, compete today. Yeah, this, this is one of those matches where honestly no one's going to lose. Not not any of these competitors and not us as hosts and not the audiences watching because it's going to be a great match. We're going to get a lot of great answers and it's going to probably be a pretty high scoring match. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, so. um, see what uh, we got from these competitors. First up, we have the number four ranked team, the Omega Club. That is Alex Omega Warden and Thomas Truth Eanes. They are 3-1 and, and their strengths are 
Christopher Nolan and bringing the right headphones to a match. That's one of those where if you aren't here today, you will not understand. And their opponent is the number three ranked Team 80s. They are 3 and 1 with three TKOs. Their strengths are, of course, 80s and repeat. Once again, that's a funny one behind the scenes. All right, K, so now that we see a little bit about the players, can you tell us how round one's going to go? So in round one, it's a whiteboard round. So all four competitors get eight different questions from eight different categories. Uh, they will write down the answer on the whiteboard. Uh, they get 15 seconds to do that. After the 15 seconds are up, they will show uh, what they wrote down and say what they wrote down. And it needs to be the same thing because otherwise you might have an issue. Uh, if uh, the answer is correct, you get a point, and if it's not correct, well, you don't get any points. That's as simple as it is. All right, let's go ahead and you know, get all four competitors in the ring right now. All right. We don't need luck, but thanks. Ooh, oh. nice. Cocky. <laughs> oh. The words just came out of his mouth, but I still got to ask him. Alex Omega Warden, are you ready? Fuck you, let's do this. Thomas, are you going to tell the true themes? Are you ready? I'm good to go. Jeremy, Adam Exploding Adams, are you ready? Repeat? I mean, yes, I'm ready. I don't think that's ever going to get old. And Sandy, don't give Sandy in this crotch man. Robinson, are you ready? Always. All right, then there will be trivia. Case, take it away with question number one. All right, guys, your first question is in the category of action movies. What valuable resource of Bolivia does Dominic Green's organization try to eliminate in Quantum of Solace? This is a bad movie. I've seen worse. I've seen uh, better. That's true. That's true. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's start with Jeremy. I'm having problems. Okay. There it is. Is it water? All right, let's go over to Alex. Water. Sandman. Water. And the truth. Nah, I put oil. Ooh, three out of four. <laughs> All right, your next question on the category of recent releases. In Lady Bird, Lady Bird and her family lives in what town? I love this movie. I wasn't a fan. Uh, damn. I didn't he hate doesn't... it, but it just the editing was jarring and it just. Uh, Edge of 17 all day. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's start off with Alex. Pens down. Haven't seen it yet. Shot in the dark. Portland. All right, let's go to Sandy. Is it San Francisco? Let's go to Thomas. I have it. Ooh, and Jeremy. I'm having a major issue with my marker. I tried to write Sacramento. I'm not even sure if that's right. Let's see oh, that board. That is. I, my marker's dying, guys. I, I see. I, yeah, I, I see Sacrum. So yeah, I'll, I'll accept yeah, that. Yeah. All right, your guys' question in the next uh, category of comic book movies: What does Iron Man reopen at the beginning of Iron Man Two? I think this movie gets too much shit. Yeah, clearly the question writer is a fan of this movie. That's a couple <laughs> matches in a row. We've heard. <laughs> now one of those, one of those is written by me. <laughs> oh, a couple of fans. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's go over to Thomas. Where is company? Um, okay, uh, Jeremy. The Stark Expo. Alex. The Stark Expo in Queens, New York. And Sandy. The Stark Expo. Yeah, technically you're right, Thomas, but we needed the specifics, so. Yeah. It's like right. Epcot Center. Right. Next question on the category of screenwriters. Name the two movies that Quentin Tarantino won his screenplay awards for. Screenplay Oscars, by the way. No, I, I just meant we understood. The, I just meant the Kids Choice Awards. <laughs> you didn't know that's Tarantino's that's a big hit with the slime. With his G-rated movies, five. <laughs> Four. I know it's a little long. Three, two, and one. Marker's down. All right, let's start with Sandy with the scribbles. Uh, Django Unchained and The Revenant. 
that would be an that's, interesting that's, that's movie. Weird. <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, Thomas. But true rom- romance and Pulp Fiction. All right, Jeremy. Pulp Fiction and Inglorious Bastards. And Alex. Pulp Fiction and Inglorious Bastards. Ooh, you're nobody got Pulp it. Fiction, Pulp Fiction and Django Unchained. Oh. Oh, I knew it was one of those two. Damn it. Well, you guys' next question in the category of gangster movies. Who placed the homosexual love interest for Reggie Cray in 2015's Legend? I like this movie. I've seen it once, and I watched it on my computer on a stream. Are you look, are you look, you're looking for the actor or the, yeah, the actor? Mm-hmm. The actor. It's one of those I'm curious to check out again because I'm a big fan of the lead actor. Oh, yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Jeremy, the wrong marker. Adams, what do you got? I don't have it. I just guessed Donald Gleason. I don't know. Okay. That would be an interesting love interest. Let's go to Alex. (laughs) I don't have it either. I just know Tom Hardy's in that movie. Mm. He is the Reggie Craig, but who is his friend? Let's go to Sandy. Uh, I just took a stab and said Johnny Depp. That'd be a cute couple. And Thomas. No clue he's in the movie or not. Dominic Cooper. We were looking for Taron Egerton. Egerton. Okay. Nice. He's a handsome young man. Your next category is animation. What animal sells ice cream to Nick Wilde in Zootopia that Nick then makes into small popsicles? Get it? Pun? Popsicles? Sorry. <laughs> That's so <sighs> funny, Case. Hey, it's not my fun, it's the movie's fun. Good thing there's only a few animals to choose from in the, this species of history. Life. Two, four, three, two, one. Alright, let's start off with Alex. Elephant? Alright, Sandy. I said bear. Thomas? Kangaroo. And Jeremy. Yeah, I I think I just realized it's a wildebeest or something, but too late I put weasel. Well, four different answers. One of them was correct. Elephants! Oh, holy shit! I got an animation question right! (laughs) Alright, your last uh, penultimate question in the category of classics. Who plays Cosmo Brown in Singing in the Rain? Correction, singing. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> gotta add that apostrophe, gotta get a little, little yeah. sting on it. I'm I, I, singing I, I, in the rain. Singing in the rain. Yeah, um, Buckle Groin's kind of like traumatized me for that. Five, four, <coughs> three, two, one. Pens down. All right, let's go to Jeremy. I don't remember the character name, so I, I hope Donald O'Connor. All right, Alex. I went with Gene Kelly. Sandy. I went with Dane Crosby. <laughs> All right, and Thomas. I don't have it. Four different yeah. answers. One of them was correct once again. Donald O'Connor. Nice. Whew. Nice dude. All right, your final question in round one. With the score currently six to three, I'm tearing up because I like you guys so much, or just because of this category. Tear jerkers. <laughs> what type of dog is Marley in Marley? In? Almost asked this question. Well, good thing you did it. First thing I well, thought of with tear jerkers. Good. First thing I thought of with tear jerkers. <laughs> you bastards. Why? Why? <laughs> so, something about Owen Wilson and dogs. Five. But then again, it. I didn't fact check it, so I could be wrong. Five. <laughs> four. <laughs> three. Two. One. Since he's a know-it-all, Jeremy, what do you got? Golden Retriever. All right, Ooh. Alex. Golden Retriever. Sandy. Thank God I changed my answer. Golden Retriever. And Thomas. Golden Retriever. 
<laughs> oh, Jesus. Four of the same answers, and they're all wrong. We were looking for Labrador. Labrador. I knew it was so that or Labrador. Yeah. 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 Wow. So Yellow Labrador. All right, gentlemen, with that said, the score is currently 6-3 to three in Team 80's favor. That was definitely uh, an interesting round. And 80's, you are going to have the advantage going into round two, so ch please choose to go first or second. We'll go first. All right, and we're going to jump to them right now. All righty, Team 80's, you decided to go first, so here's how round two is going to go. You are going to be told the categories. Don't worry, I'll remember this time. You will choose either red or black and pick a number one through ten. Either a category or a color is going to get selected. If a category gets selected, you are either going to choose that category, hand it off, forcing your opponents to answer questions from it, or you are going to respin. If you hand off, you are only going to get one respin option left. And then if a color gets selected, it's either going to be for you or your opponent, and they're going to have the choice to pick for themselves or for their opponent. So with that being said, Team 80s, your categories are Mixed Bag, Box Office, Wes Anderson, Alan Rickman, Pixar, Rom-Coms, Christopher Nolan, and 80s. Please choose the number 1 through 10 and bet on either red or black. You want the number or the color? Um, I'll do the color this time. I, I'm going to go red this time. Okay, and I'll pick, And what did you say the numbers were between? 1 through 10. 1 and 10. 1 through 10? 9. All right, nine is the category of mixed bag. It can be anything. All right, do we want? I think we. I think we should take it, Sandy, because I don't. There's a couple I really don't want. Oh, yeah, me too. But mystery box could be anything. It could even be a boat. <laughs> are we sticking with the? All right, we're boat? gonna we're we're gonna stick with. We oh, wait, off. or we could, or we, we could hand it off. off. So that's what I'm thinking. Is handing it off. Yeah, because that may. All right, let's hand it off. Whoa, all right. right. Last minute, last minute um, sweep of the rug. All right, gentlemen, you handed it off, so now potentially you can get a category you said you didn't like, so go ahead and respin. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go five. All right, in case, please read another five. category of rom-com. Rom -com. Okay. We can do this, Andy. Right. Yep. It's not like either of you are married. <laughs> All right, and just remember, we will not accept an answer until we hear multiple choice. The final answer. <laughs> it's, I'm leaving that in until we say until we hear the final answer. But there is multiple choice or and, multiple choice. <laughs> and Omega Club, you get a quick five count on any steal opportunity, so no repeats. Yeah, so and go. All right, 80s. Your first question in the category of rom coms. What is the name of the company that Andy works for in How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days? Never seen it, Sandy. Anything? I've, I've only seen it a couple of times. Um, it was a. Uh, I'm, I'm in multiple, well, multiple, multiple choice. Your options are A. Vogue, B. L. C. Composure, or D. Vanity Fair. I think it's C. Really? I I was thinking. It was one of the big ones, like Vogue or Vanity Fair. You don't think it is? It might be Vanity Fair. If you want to go with Vanity Fair, we can. Yeah, let's go let's go find Vanity Fair. Final answer. Final. Incorrect. Omega Club chance to steal. Vogue. Also incorrect. Oh. oh, looking for a composure actually. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, Sandy. Man, I'm sorry. All right, buddy. Should have just trusted right. you. You've, you've seen it. You've seen it. I should have trusted you. All right. All right. <laughs> Your next question in rom-com. Who plays Ryan Reynolds' grandmother in The Proposal? Oh. Yeah, I think I know this one. It's, um... <laughs> sure as hell can't... Uh, it's Betty White, right? It's Betty White. Yeah. Bet yeah. Betty White, Betty finally. White. Two points. Hold on. <laughs> Good point. Your, ne your, uh, your next question in rom-com. In the second Bridget Jones movie, The Edge of Reason, Bridget travels to what country where she gets arrested? Never saw this one, Zandy. <laughs> Does she travel and she gets arrested? And five, four, 
Three. Multiple choice. Multiple choice. Your options are A, Korea, B, Indonesia, C, Thailand, or D, Japan. I'm thinking Thailand. What do you think? Thailand was the one that was jumping out at me, too. Alright. Thailand, <laughs> final answer. Four right, points. Alright. And your last question. In the movie, he's not. He's just not that into you. Bradley Cooper's character cheats on his wife with a hot yoga instructor played by whom? It's just not that into you. Who's the star in that, Sandy? Uh, oh, I know who it is. It's, okay. um... Repeat Five. the question, please, while I think of okay. it. Okay, that's one of your yeah, repeats. I, I, got, I, I, got, I think I got it, in... actually. Kate Upton, final answer. And that's incorrect. Omega Scarlett Scarlet oh, Johansson. Shit. Scarlett Johansson. Oh, damn. And that's correct for I'm two points. I'm thinking of a different movie. I'm thinking of the Cameron Diaz movie. Ooh, big steal. That's a big steal for Omega Club. Damn. Sorry, Sandy. Right. Should have gone no. multiple. All right. All right. And with that said, um, 80's lead is 9-5. to five. Huge steal for Omega Club. And let's go bounce back to them what they were given. Mixed bag. All right, yeah. Omega Club, after a huge, huge, huge steal, you guys not only have a chance to take a lead, but actually a pretty commanding lead going into round three, <clears throat> theoretically. So with that being said, you were given mixed bag, though, so let's see if it's going to pay off. Let's work these through. Let's get through it. Your first question, mixed bag slash anime. In Kubo and the Two Strings, the sword unbreakable could be found on a giant's what? Never seen it. I have only once. But go multiple choice. Give it a shot. All right. Is it A hand, B leg, C skull, or D stomach? Hand. Hand. Final answer. That is incorrect. Teenagers. Um, I think it's stomach, Sandy. What do you think? I think it is as well. That is okay, stomach, final answer. Well. We were looking for skull. a skull. All right. <laughs> All right, your next question under mixed bag slash franchise films. Action. Action. I win franchise. In which Latin American country does the climax of GoldenEye take place? Oh, shit. Oh. So am I. Five. Five. Four. Four. Three. three two, two. Multiple choice. Is it A, Belize, B, Cuba, C, Mexico, or D, Nicaragua? I had Cuba in my head when it I came up. Cuba. Let's go with Cuba, final answer. That is correct for a point. point. <clears throat> All right. Your next category, mixed bag slash girls with mohawk haircuts. <laughs> Who played the killer Martin Vangar in David Fincher's The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo? That would be Rooney Mara. Final answer. Oh, oh. That is incorrect. Oh, oh no. It's, a, it's still in Scarlet's Garden. Scarlet's Garden. Scar 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 I thought you asked to play... The killer no, the, tattoo. Uh, no, we asked who played the killer, Martin Bangor. Uh, uh, so sorry. It's, it's Blade Runner all over again, dude. It's all right. <laughs> all right, gentlemen, your final question. Under, I can't think of anything funny, so Oscars. Oscars. How many nominations for acting has Amy Adams received? Nominations. Okay, okay. Thinking three, five, four. I'm almost certain. Three. Yeah, two. let's go with three. Final answer. That is incorrect. Chance to steal. Oh, Eighty. It's got to be four then. That is also yeah, incorrect. Let's go. It was. I five. thought we could talk it through, but I wouldn't have said five, so it's fine. All right. So with anyway, with that being said, 
Uh, a pretty, uh, pretty uh, struggling round for both competitors, but we got some steals there. 11 to 6 going into round 3. All right, Team 80. So as we see, you guys are in the lead, and round 3 is going to go like what case? Well, round 3 is the IMDb round, if you still don't know it. I'll explain it. Why not? You got uh, three movies. Uh, both teams will get three movies based on IMDb information. One two-pointer, one three-pointer, and one five-pointer. The two-pointer, they'll get the year. Then b decide between themselves who's going to answer that. And then get the genres and actor combination with that uh, to name the movie. Uh, for the three-pointer, they get the year the other competitor has to answer. And they get director and keywords. And for the five-pointer, uh, they get the year. And then they can collaborate and choose if they want either actor, director, genres, or keywords. And based on that, they will have to name the movie. So, Team 80s, give us your numbers. Go first, then. Movie one or movie two? Movie two. And three or four? Three. And five or six? Six. Two, three, and six. Alrighty, so, Case, can you read the two-pointer to a Mega Club when we bounce them right now? Mega Club, are you ready? Sure. Alright, let's so do it. Mega Club. It is five, just a reminder. Yeah. yeah. So, the two and the three will tie you up. So, your two-pointer, movie number one, released in 1975. And this is the actor and genres combination who will take that. Not confident with that year, but yeah, you know what? I'll I'll take this one. Alex takes it. All right. Again, Alex. The movie was released in 1975. Genres are action, comedy, and sci-fi. And your actor is David Carradine. <sighs> Guys, do have three repeats left. And five, four, three, two, one. Don't have it. Repeat. Death, Look. death. Oh, sorry. Don't do it, Jeremy. Looking sorry. for Death Race 2000. And yeah. My repeat didn't count? No, it's got to be new calls for Alex. Yeah. It's Alex. All right, oh, yeah. So we'll, death. Yeah, sorry. We'll stick with uh, Omega Club then. Thomas, you will enter the three-pointer, movie number four, which was released in 2002. Your keywords are Harlem, dry business cleaning, and cocaine. And your director... Dry cleaning business. Dry cleaning business and cocaine. And your director is Charles Stone III. Released in 2002, directed by Charles Stone III, and the keywords are Harlem, dry cleaning business, and cocaine. In five, four, three, two, one, time. That is correct for three points. Paid it full. <laughs> Holy shit. I knew you would get the hood question, Thomas. Holy yeah. Shit. <laughs> wow, what a pull. <laughs> the last second there. Nice one, dude. But with that said, you still have to hit your five pointer, or you will be out by TKO. Alright. Mega Club, your five pointer yes. movie number five was released in 1978. Choose two clues of actor, director, genres, and keywords. Alright, I think keywords will help. Yep. 78, 78, ugh. You want to do actor to be safe? I mean... I could go either way, 78. It could. It could. 
Dude, I'm gonna let you pick. You know what? Let's do director. Let's do it. Alright. Director and keywords then. Again. Your movie is released in 1978. The keywords are con artist, injured veteran, and hell's kitchen. And it was directed by Sylvester Stallone. You have two repeats left. In five, four, three, repeat. All right. Released in 1978, directed by Sylvester Stallone, and the keywords are con artist, injured veteran, and hell's kitchen. Five, four, three, two, one more repeat. Your last one it was released in 1978, directed by Sylvester Stallone. Keywords are con artist, injured veteran, and hell's kitchen. Five, four, three, two, staying alive. Moving on to the regular season with their very first matchup with a number one contenders match with their fourth TKO and fourth win Team 80s Repeat Team 80s Repeat <laughs> Team 80s <laughs> Alrighty Team 80s got the big win there another TKO it's it's just it's just one of those situations where like are they that good or are they just getting the good luck of the draw case any thoughts I do think it's a little bit good luck of the draw. I think that Omega Club was just a little unlucky in the questions today because, um, yeah, it, it was a low-scoring match for both teams, uh, but that doesn't mean that neither of these teams are bad or anything. I mean, look, you, you see it at the record. They're both 3-1, and one and they deserve to be here. It's just the questions were rough for them, uh, especially in round two. Both got categories that they didn't really want, really. Um, so yeah, it, it just happens, uh, but I do think uh, Omega Club is going to come back, they're going to uh, come back with a vengeance, especially knowing uh, Alex, uh, who will have some words about that. Um, let's just see what they have to say. Yeah, let's go ahead and jump over to Robert the Hobbit Parker, who's going to interview Team 80s first. Alrighty, hello everybody, I am Robert the Hobbit Parker, here for post-match interviews with our victors today, Team 80s. Guys, let's just hear your first thoughts. How do you feel coming out with another TKO? Ooh. First off, it's driving me nuts. I don't think anyone said the answer, which was Paradise Alley, which I, I just had to get that out of the way. Just so they're not asking in the YouTube comments, what was the answer? Okay. Um, it was not a good, it wasn't a great match for us. Like, you know, we, I, I feel like we, you know, had a rough round two for the first time. We usually, you know, have had pretty good round twos, but you know, once in a while that happens, um, you know, you play sometimes, you play in a day that you're a little tired and you're not at a hundred percent and, you know, you don't you don't give it as good as you could on another day, but you know what? We we pulled we we stuck in there, we hung in there, um, we we scored the pen, the points that we needed to score, and that's just kind of what you do. And you know, it's our it's our fourth TKO. So <laughs> what can you say? I you know I'm I'm happy. You know, we're in this position. I'm happy that we get that that next shot. Um, I, I as Kay said, I don't take anything away from Omega Club. You know, everyone. You know, get some bad luck with questions sometimes. It's happened to all of us. It's happened to me in other leagues. So, you know, they're awesome competitors. And I think on another day, it easily could have gone the other way. Um, and I just, I'm really proud of those guys and what they've done. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Just, you... just, just to build on that. I, yeah. You know, congrats to those guys. Uh, they played a hell of a game. And, uh, you know, we gave as good as we got in round two. We may not have done, uh, you know, as great as we, as great as we normally do in, in round two, but. Uh, it was strategic that we gave them the, the, the mixed bag, uh, you know, and re-rolled. We were hoping for a category that we'd be strong in, uh, but we also gave them something we know that they might not have been gotten anything in it, and it sort of worked for us, uh, you know, because they didn't score that many points in round two. Um, but all hats off to them. I want to say thank you to my team partner, Jeremy Adams, <laughs> uh, you know, an absolute machine. Um, you know, and, and now we're moving on. You know, to uh, you know, to see what happens next, and and that Absolutely. was the important thing today. 
Absolutely. So, obviously, Jeremy the Right Marker Adams and Sandy the Sandman Robinson oh, moving God. on to take on the losers of the team championship match. Uh, do either of you two have one team you'd prefer to face next over the other, or any yeah. hopes about who you want to take down in the number one contenders match? And this is no disrespect to this is no disrespect to the the other team, you know. But I want Luca, and I want Greg. And I want them again. I don't want them to think that they rolled over us. I want to take them, and I want to take everything they have against them. It doesn't matter. But we'll face whoever we face. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing is, in our match against them, you know, it isn't like they knocked us out. We were right there every step of the way. And if, the, if things had done gone just a little differently, we would have had them. And I think in another situation, we can have them. And we're... You know, there's this whole narrative starting that I can't beat Luca. That Luca, he's just, he's gonna beat me every time. And the fact is, I've been on his heels every time. When those two singles matches we played were just one point off. So, you know, in the last one and the other one, one question off. I mean, I'm always right there, and I know we can take those guys one of these days. And if we get that opportunity, we'll absolutely take it. On the other hand, though, I do very much respect Big Picture. I think Paul and Michael are awesome players, and it would be nice to play them. Um, Paul, you know, I've gotten to know him. He's, I think, one of the real rising stars in this league, and I think he he's been saying he would love, to, you know, to have a match with us. So I think that would also be awesome. So either way, we're going to be there. We're going to be ready, ready, and we're going to have a better day than we had today. <laughs> Absolutely. So either way, you will see Team 80s taking on the losers of the team championship for the number one contender spot. That's going to be a hell of a match. Cannot wait to see that, of course. Now let's go over and talk to our unfortunate losers today in Team Omega Club. Alrighty, guys, we just talked to Team 80s. We are here now with the Omegas. Guys, uh, how are you feeling about your performances today? Uh, what are you thinking about the future from here? The uh, floor is yours right now. I shit the bit. That's probably the worst game. No, that is the worst game of my career, I guess. It's pretty terrible. Uh, I wanted to apologize to you, Alex. Sorry for that round two question. Just, uh, yeah, I wasn't on my game today. No, dude. I, I've not been on my game for a while. This is the third tournament going on here in Worldwide where I've come this close, this close to cinching the last victory I need. And in the end, it just all falls apart. I've been playing at way too high a competitive level in these leagues for too long now. I think we go back to the lab. We go into the regular season. We play some new teams. We see some new faces. We redesign and we reclaim our status as an elite team in this league because that's what we're going to need to do to get back to this level of competition. And I'm ready to put the work in if you are. Definitely, definitely. Absolutely. And nobody, you guys still had a pretty solid game today. Uh, obviously, you guys still won your bracket, so there's nobody who has any merit in saying you didn't deserve to be here. You guys still fought hard to the end. There was a great pull in round three by Thomas, obviously. Uh, so, I mean, don't, don't, Hold your heads too low. I mean, you guys still won your bracket. You still made it here. Uh, but speaking of regular season, Alex, you brought it up. Is there anybody that you guys are looking right away to face? Anybody you eyeing up that you want to slap down to regain your top standing? I'll say one thing. If anybody thinks that this game is indicative of what Thomas and I can do together in this ring, you don't know us that well. Anybody wants to step up We'll take it, and we'll take you, and you'll learn why Omega Club will be your end. Alrighty, strong words there from Alex. Uh, if there's no other last comments, we will hand it back over to Henry and Case to wrap us up for the night. Alrighty, so as uh, Robert <laughs> mistakenly said, this is not the end of the night. This is just part one of this video, and this 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 is championship week. The questions are going to be harder. The, there's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of stakes, and there's a lot of stuff going on. So we gotta understand that everyone's emotions are high, and everyone's minds are jumbled and going crazy. And as you can see in this whole video, this is how it went down. So, strong words from Alex, he definitely seemed a little down, but then he picked it right back up and came back to his old Omega self, and 
80s. <laughs> they, they want killer chemistry game, but that means they have to lose. So I'm definitely curious to see how that's going to go. Uh, Case, what are your final thoughts with this match and the potential of the future with these two teams? Well, uh, yeah, Mega Club has definitely shown time and time again in this tournament that they are in the clouds that today, yeah, today they had an off day, but we've seen in the other matches that they can uh, play really good games, uh, come really close to actually winning uh, this tournament. Uh, so you'll see them back, and I'm, uh, I'll am i be happy to give them another match against anyone who thinks that they can take on Mega Club. Uh, but yeah, Team 80s, uh, they, got, they got the number one contenders uh, match now. And I really wonder uh, who's going to win the final. We'll find that out in a little bit, but it's going to be good either way. Because we either get 80s versus Killer Chemistry 2, which already was a close one the first time around, or we get 80s versus Big Picture. We've not, not seen that yet, but I'm very interested to see how that would go, because I think both teams are very, very well matched up uh, between those two. So... We'll see. I'm just looking forward to uh, whatever happens in the future. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I, I'm, just, I'm looking forward to this match, and we're about to find out right now. So I'm Henry Confidential, as Case, uh, the Grand Admiral Coralesa, and hey, <laughs> and let's go uh, see what uh, Killer Chemistry and Big Fisher has to say right now. Wow, we have made it. 64 players, 32 teams, down to four, down to two, down to one. This is it. Henry Confidential here, Case Cornelisa. We already had our singles championship, and now we're here at the team's championship. The undercard was not exactly how we thought it was going to turn out on paper, but guess what? This is not going to disappoint. Case, how do you feel, man? I, I've been nervous. I mean, I dressed up. Come on. I've been nervous. I've been excited. I, I'm uh, like a roller coaster of emotions right now. I don't know what to feel, but this is going to be such an amazing match because we have such good teams in this match that I, I can't wait to get this started and to get this done. You, you got that saying right, and this is the championship. We already saw the format in singles, but you guys are ready for it once again in teams. It's going to be a little different. We're going to have a different layout, and I'm just excited to show you guys. So let's just go ahead and get this started right now because I'm just tired of waiting <laughs> on the inevitable. The people demanded it. People asked for it. The people have wanted it for months. And months, Greg. Now the people are going to get it. Okay, yeah, look. I got to get one thing out of the way first. You got this guy named the Einstein on Killer Chemistry. Michael, do you know what Einstein studied? Was it was it chemistry or was it physics? I, what, I, was was I, the Mendeleev I, taken? I have no idea. But that, that's beside the point. This is just a this is just a warm up for your singles match and for my battleground match. Which the only way they can have, try and make us lose that is by scheduling all this crap on the same day. They can be the best team yesterday. They can be the best team last week. They can be the best team tomorrow. I frankly don't give a shit. The only thing that matters is that we outscore them in these next five rounds. This is charity at the end of the day. This is charity. And we, out of the good of our hearts, are giving the people and Big Picture what they want by letting them share a screen with us. Um, but at the end of the day, they just got to realize this is our screen. This is our show. This is our belt. And they can get fucked. But we're here to win. And we're going to do just that right now. Once more onto the breach. This is just uh, a game that's over with and ready to get done. Let's move on so we can get to our actual map battles that matter because this is over. First up is Killer Chemistry. They have one TKO with a 4 0 record. Their strength is drama and appeasing Transformers fan. Luca Fallon and Greg Weinstein. Let's see what they can do. Next up, we have Big Picture. They are also 4 0. They like coming of age and they actually know what the good German is about. Paul Oyama and Michael Campbell, let's see what they can do. All right, Case, okay, so now we know a little bit about these players, even though at this point, 4-0 for each team. I'm pretty sure we know everything we need to know about them. I can't imagine there's going to be any tricks up under their sleeves, but let's go ahead and bring them into the ring and get this party started. Do it. First up, from Killer Chemistry, he is the Butcher, Luca Fallon. And his buddy, he actually claims to have chemistry with this guy, the Einstein, Greg Weinstein. Woo. Next up, their opponents. Representing Big Picture, man of few words, Zoso Michael Campbell. And the man after my own heart, 
Prime time, Polyama. All right, guys, new format. We all know how this goes, but awesome. case, give a reminder just in case. Well, round one uh, is the same round one as always, so you should know it. But if you don't, this is how it goes. Every competitor will get eight questions from eight different categories. They have 15 seconds to write their answer down on a whiteboard. After 15 seconds are up, they will show what they wrote down and say what they wrote down uh, to make sure that both are, uh, are the same. Because if both are not the same, then we have an issue and they don't get a point. Because if they both uh, say and have written down the same answer uh, and it's correct, then they get a point. And that's how it goes. <laughs> All right. Killer Chemistry, are you ready? Always. Let's go. Big picture, are you ready? Let's do this. It is time for the team championship. We are going to have our very first team champion right now, and there will be trivia. Case, question number one. All right, guys, your first question in category of hand-drawn animation. Who voices Thomas in Pocahontas? That's all there is to that question. That's all I want to say about that. <laughs> So nervous. Hold on, new pen. All right, and five. Oh, my pen! My pen's dying. Four, God damn it! Three. Can I go first. Two. One. All right, Paul. What do you have? Uh, Christian Bale. Three points. Greg. Uh, I said the other one, Mel Gibson. He was John Smith. Okay, Michael. Yeah, I had Mel Gibson as well. All right, and Luca. Christian Bale. One one. Nice. Christian Bell's correct answer. One one. Yeah, know that because he's not an eternal sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> Your second category under recent releases. What recent movie features a scene of a bull in a china shop? I Suck. missed this one. I saw the trailer. Yeah. Five. Four. Three. Two and one. All right, let's start off with. Are we doing Paul first every time, or? I don't know, Greg. <laughs> okay, just making sure because there's a pen. All right, uh, let's go to Greg. That's a uh, Ferdinand. All right, go over to Paul. Uh, Ferdinand. Luca. Great John Cena in Ferdinand. And Michael. I didn't get that. Didn't get that. Ooh. Ooh, hey. Goodness. All right, guys. Your next question in the category of comic book movies. Who plays the antagonist Sloane in 2008's Wanted? As it's been the last few matches, just keep the dialogue to a minimum because my mm -hmm. heart's pounding too loud and I, we just can't really say it. Anything and stupid. Five, four, three, two. Uh, let me go first. What? Okay, Greg, go first. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Got it. All right. Uh, yeah. Paul? Morgan Freeman. Luca. Morgan Freeman. And Michael. Morgan Freeman. They all got it. Bad boy, Mike. Bad boy, all right, Mike. everybody's on the board. Next yeah. question, category of screenwriters. What film was the first co collaboration between writer Charlie Kaufman and director Michelle Gondry? Are you... Five, four, three, two, one. All right, first off, let's start off with Michael. Turn of Sunshine on the spotless line. Mm. All right, Greg. Uh, I got that as well, but I don't think it's right. Mm. All right, Paul. I also had Eternal Sunshine. Oh. And Luca. I got it this time, but is it right, Eternal Sunshine? No. The answer we're looking for was human nature. Oh, damn. I want to give a reminder to everyone before we move on with the next question. Uh, when you're writing, show both hands that you're writing on your whiteboard. Yeah, sorry. All right. Yeah, I didn't, that was right. Next question in the category of gangster movies. What 1991 film stars Christian Slater as famous gangster Lucky Luciano? <sighs> give a lucky look in our league. That's <laughs> something different. Loving this. And five, four, repeat three, 
Repeat. All right. Gotta repeat. What 1991 film stars Christian Slater as famous gangster Lucky Luciano? That was Killer Chemistry, right? With the repeat. That was ki Killer Chemistry. Yes. And five, four, three, two, one. Luca, I think you got it on your repeat. I did not. You Ooh. did not. All right, Paul, did you get it? I knew Henry would ask about this. True Romance. Oh, no. No. Greg, oh. did you get it? It's Mobsters. All oh. right. And Michael? Of course. I didn't have it. I didn't have it. Ooh, it is, okay. in fact, Mobsters. Greg with the point. Nice, Paul. Point indeed. God damn it. All right, your next question in the category of action. In Kingsman, A Secret Service, what song plays while people in a church are killing each other? I love this scene, and I love this song. This is definitely probably one of my favorite scenes in movie history. Really? Probably because of the combination. Mm. Five, four, right, three. Repeat, repeat. All right, that's All right. a repeat for big picture. What in Kingsman? What song plays while the people in the church are killing each other? I like how I just didn't say the repeat at first. I was like, he just wants a second, couple extra seconds. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's go to Michael with the repeat. Yeah, go to me. I had money for nothing. Oh, oh, Michael first. Michael first. Yeah, originally I had money for nothing, but it's Freebird. All right, Greg. Okay. Yeah, it's it's Freebird. I'm having trouble with the. I I, I see it. I see, I see it. it. Okay. All right, next up, we got uh, Paul. Free bird. All right, and Luca. Fucked it up. I put sympathy for the devil. Oh, big miss. All right. All right, two more questions. The category of classics, your penultimate question. Charlton Heston portrays what famous Renaissance artist in The Agony and the Ecstasy? Guess what, Henry? I haven't seen this. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. Me and uh, Jeremy had a conversation today writing questions, and I brought up ten movies that I didn't see, see that were supposedly too easy. <laughs> oh, oh, did I say I hadn't seen them? I also hadn't heard of them. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, and one. Pens down, Sharpies, markers, pencils, whatever you got. Luca, what do you got? Based on, uh, based on one of my favorite Animaniacs shorts, I think it's Michelangelo. All right, Paul? Michelangelo. Greg? Yeah, Michelangelo. And yeah. Michael. Uh, I didn't have it. Oof. Oh, it's... All right, going into your final question with the score currently 9-7. to seven. Tear jerkers. Wait, what was, the, what was the category? Tear jerkers. Tear jerkers. In terms of endearment, Aurora Greenway lives in what Texas city? So sorry to the non-Americans. <laughs> we are two. Two Americans. Two Americans. One of them looks like he knew. I don't, but I'm guessing. All right. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, and one. All right. Paul? Junction City? Interesting. Uh, Greg? Uh, Houston? I don't know if you can see that. Mm hmm. All right, Michael. I said Austin. And Luca. I also have Austin. The answer okay. was Houston. Wow. Thanks, Ray. Oh, Is that a different <laughs> Kansas. All right, so after round one, right. the score is currently <laughs> 10 to 7. Greg with the highlight of that with six. Paul right behind him with five. Luca with four, and Michael unfortunately only had two, but the match itself is close. And with that being said, before we get any further, Killer Chemistry, you are in the lead. Would you like to go first or second going into round two? We'll go second. All right, they're going second. And with that being said, let's go ahead and tell you about the rules in round two. As you saw in the ch in singles championship, they're a little different than what you're used to, but here it is. All right, so we are going to bring out the lovely Wheel of Faith because we brought it back. There are going to be 14 categories. There are going to be 12 categories on the wheel, but we still have red and black. The team spinning is going to spin the wheel, and then they are either going to stick with it or they are going to respin because handoffs are taken away for the championship round. Multiple choice will be available, knocking it down from two points to one. 
And if a color gets if a color gets landed on, then that person that team is going to be to select their own category. So with that being said, big picture before I spin for you, please choose red or black. Uh, let's go with red. All right. Are you nervous? Because I am. <laughs> I know I am. All right. I can't and here's even the see spin. that thing. I'll, I'll bring it up to the camera after I spin it. Chick flicks. Hmm. Big picture. Stick with that or spin what? again. What do you think, Mike? I don't know when, like, little inside when that category was red. Luca did celebrate pretty. Yeah. So um, I wouldn't. I would feel pretty good about it, but I think. Yeah, let's like, respin. If we were facing any other team, I think. Yeah, but let's respin. Respin. All right, this is what they're gonna stick with. And it is Indies. All right, big picture. Your first question in the category of Indies. In 2015's Last Days in the Desert, what actor starred as both Jesus and the Devil? Last Days in the Desert. Michael, do you know this? No. no. All right, Bye. we'll go multiple choice. All right. A, Ian McGregor. B, Karen Heinz, C, Colin Farrell, or D, Michael Fassbender? I think it's Ewan McGregor. I think. I not final answer. Not final answer. Like, um, so not, it's not Kieran Hines. Wouldn't be Fassbender because we would no. have heard about it, I'm sure. Um, Five? Yeah, we'll go Ewan McGregor, final answer. Four point. That's nice. Right. Next question in Indies. Who stars in 2003's The Station Agent as Finbar, a man obsessed with trains? Oh my god, I was just looking at this too. Think about it. Think, think back to. Can you remember yeah, the yeah. poster yeah. or anything? Multiple choice. Options are A. Bobby Can Cannaville, B. Richard Jenkins, C. Peter Dinklage, or D. Paul Giamatti. Uh, Peter Dinklage, final answer. Three point. Fuck. All right, yeah, your next question in Indies. In Chasing Amy, Alyssa gives Holden a painting that the two uh, had seen together at what type of location? Uh, it's at like a pool. It's at yeah. like a cafe, restaurant type of thing. Okay. Yeah, let's go. So yeah. that final answer. Yeah. Uh, Henry, can we take that? Diner? Is it that right? Yes, t that's acceptable. All right, yeah. For two yeah. points. Yeah. Your last question to extend the lead. Swingers follows a group of friends who are all trying to break into what profession? Hollywood. That's Act acting. Act hey, acting. Like, acting. Hey, final. Oh, wait. Are they, are they all you said, acting? You said final answer, and no, it's not. correct for two points. Okay. okay. There you go. There you go. All right. 13 to 10 after big picture. Oh, that was kind of rough. All right. Killer Chemistry, you guys are up, and the wheel is back. You guys have black, and you guys are going to have both your spins, so let's make sure this angle is good. Here it is. And that is James Bond. I kind of like that. How do you feel about it? I did do some, uh, I did do some studying about James Bond. Stick with All Bond. Right. Gonna stick with James Bond. All right, gentlemen. Once again, we will not accept Nance until final answer or until time runs out. Your first question in James Bond: What is the name of the contact Bond meets in Montenegro who tells Lashif the Bond figured out his tick? It's the uh, it's the American guy who's always in the movies. Yeah. Um. The contact that he meets in are you, is that is that Felix Leiter? Wait, um, wait, is that, oh, wait, no, is it him or is it the detective, it's the detective, Five, the French guy? Matt this. Four, four, what? three, three. Multiple three, choice, multiple choice. All right, is it A, Felix Leiter, B, Dryden, C, Carter, or D, Manthus? Yeah, it's, it's the, it's, it's not Leiter, it's the detective that tells him about the tick. Mathis. Mathis, okay, Mathis, final answer. That is point. correct for a point. All right, your second question. 
What sport does Bond play with Goldfinger in Goldfinger? Go, final answer. That is correct for a tie game. Tie game. Second question. What is the name of Sean Bean's 006 in Goldeneye? Alec Trevelyan, final answer. For the lead, two points. Jesus Christ. There you go, Luca. Nice and your ball. final question to potentially take a bigger lead. What is the name of Stromberg's lair in The Spy Who Loved Me? Uh, Atlantis, final answer. Two more Jesus points. Jesus Christ. All right, and that is going to take us into round three, which, as once again, as if you saw the singles match, you're going to be familiar with. But if not, here's how it's going to go. So we've had a long tournament, and all these competitors have had some luck getting categories and have some bad luck getting categories they weren't a fan of. Going into this championship, we decided to let them pick any category that they wanted that they're going to strictly get four questions from with still the options of multiple choice, and stealing will be available. So Killer Chemistry, you are in the lead, 17 to 13. Once again, would you like to go first or second? Uh, we should go first now to put the pressure on, right, Luca? I'm going to go first, yeah. Alrighty. Yeah. So, Case, can you read them questions for actor filmography, which is what Killer Chemistry chose? Yeah, you guys chose actor filmography, so you can show off your strength in this category. The first question, which actors start in the movies? Brain Donors, Box of Moonlight, The Losing Defense, and Fading Gigolo. Once again, you know, we will not accept an answer until we hear a final answer, so... Just can I get the uh, choices, uh, choices one more time? Sorry, I'm trying to write them down. The, uh, I can give you the choices, and that's a repeat. repeat. I didn't Five. hear the... Uh, I got Four. brain donors and fading tickles. I'm not sure. Three. Multiple choice? Repeat. Two. Repeat. All right, that's a repeat. Okay. Which actor start in the movies? Brain donors, Box of Moonlight, The Losing Defense, and fag Fading Gigolo. You want to take it to multiple choice? Yeah, it might be Richard Gere, but yeah, I'd go multiple choice. Going right. to take multiple choice. Your options are A. John Turturro, B. Sam Rockwell, C. Stanley Tucci, or D. Woody Allen. Okay, Woody Allen and uh, Turturro are both in Fading Gigolos. Um, the others. Five, four, three. I say Allen. Two. Go with Woody Allen. Final answer. That's incorrect. Big picture chance to steal. Uh, John Turturro, final answer. Four that points. is correct for a big one-point steal. Yes. All right. Next question in film actor filmography. What actress starred in the films Blue City, Made to Order, Heart of Dixie, and Only the Lonely? Uh, Luca, did they say Blue City? Yes, they did. And five, four. Well, it's a choice again. Three. I don't know, Luca. Choice. Options are A. Laura Dern, B. Deborah Foreman, C. Ali Sheedy, or D. Mayor Winningham. What do you think, Greg? Uh, I honestly don't know. Um, I'm also pretty, and pretty clear five. on this one. Laura Dern, maybe? Three. Now, let's see Laura Dern, final answer. Incorrect. Big picture. Ali Sheedy, final answer. For another wow. point. Jesus. All right. Killer uh, Chemistry, your next question in actor filmography. What actor start in the movies? K2, Deadfall, Megiddo, The Omega Code 2, and The Divide. I honestly didn't hear the middle two again. We're going to take uh, another repeat. All right. Which actors start in K2, Deadfall, Megiddo the Omega Code 2, and The Divide? And just a heads up, you have one repeat one left. One repeat left. We're going to have to take that down to multiple choice, I think. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Options are A, James M Ramar, B, Billy Zane. C. Michael Bean or D. Michael Rooker. I like Michael Bean as an answer. And 
five, four. Yeah, three. Michael Bean. Michael Bean. Final answer. That's correct for a point. Oh, thank God. All right. And your last question in actor filmography. What actor starred in the movies? Song of the South, So Dear to My Heart, The Window, and Treasure Island. Oh, God, what's his name? It's the dad in Song of the South. What else is he in? Is that... Um, no. Shit. Shit. And five. Multiple choice. It's not Matthew McCain, right? Multiple choice? Multiple choice. Options are A, Tommy Kirk, B, Bobby Driscoll, C, Kevin Cor- Coran, or D, James MacArthur. James MacArthur sounds familiar, but... That, what was the that third actor? Yeah. I didn't hear the third actor. I'll repeat the options for you. That's uh, that's free. A. Tommy Kirk. B. Tommy. Uh, Bobby Driscoll. C. Kevin Corcoran. Or D. James MacArthur. It's either Bobby okay. Driscoll or James MacArthur, I think. It's up to you. I don't got it. Five. James MacArthur. Final answer. Ooh, incorrect. incorrect. Big, big oh, picture. Sure. B, Bobby Driscoll, final answer. And another, For another steal. steal. Yes. Go. Wow. wow. That is something we did not expect. That was an oh. interesting turn of events. Big picture now is only down two points, two points. 16 to 18. And they are up with their strength category, which they chose Oscars. Gentlemen, once again, multiple choice will be available, and we will not accept an answer until we hear final answer. Your first question. Cary Grant received his first acting nomination for what 1941 film? 41. So Philadelphia Story is 40. Is that... It's not his girlfriend. Five. Uh, Let's go multiple choice. Is it A, Suspicion, B, None But the Lonely Heart, C, The Talk of the Town, or D, Penny Serenade? Um, so do Michael you know Young. the release dates of like any of those movies? Like, um, no, not solidly enough to know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll go with suspicion. Final answer. That is incorrect. Chance of steal, killer chemistry. Choices again. Is it A. Suspicion. B. None but the lonely heart. C. The talk of the town. And D. Penny serenade. I was thinking B. None but the lonely. What do you got, Luca? Number the Lonely. That sounds familiar. Let's go with that. Number the Lonely. Also incorrect. Final answer? Yes. That is incorrect. Oh, We're looking for Penny Serenade. Penny Okay. Yeah. yeah. On the steal, don't forget yeah. to say um, final answer now that you have time. Okay. Sure. All right. Big picture. Your second question. How many Oscars did E.T. the Extraterrestrial win? Win. One score, I think. Yeah. Do you reckon... There's no acting. There's no directing. It did not win. Five. Did not win picture. Four. I can go to multiple choice. I'd rather one point. Yeah, multiple it's choice. A guess. Yeah. Multiple right. choice. Is it, is it A, one, B, two, C, four, or D, six? Do you reckon like maybe production design or some shit like that? Like I don't want to just. I don't want to just reach if we don't know what it would possibly be for, but. Yeah. Um, do you want to go with two? Five. 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 I'm Four. Okay with two. I'm okay with three. Two. two. Final answer. That is incorrect. Killer chemistry. Chance of steal. Fuck. One or four, Luca. What do you want to go with? I have a feeling it might be just score. I think it's one. Do you want to go with. We're going to go with one. Final answer. <laughs> that is also incorrect. It was actually four. Sound, sound effects, visual effects, and score. Visual effects. That's three. Sound, sound, sound effects. Sound. Those are two oh, okay, okay, okay. My bad, my bad, my bad. Sorry about that. All right, big picture. Your third question. How many Best Director Oscar nominations has David Fincher received? So we've got Benjamin Button, Social Network. Was it Girl with the Dragon Tattoo? Five. Is that nominated? Four. I think he was, because I remember him at the Oscars. Could repeat, repeat, please. That's a repeat. You got two left. I'm okay with three. 
How many Best Director Oscar nominations has David Fincher received? Three, final Second. answer. That is incorrect. Killer Chemistry, chance for a two-point steal. Two or four, Luca. Benjamin Button. Um, Social Network. Social Network. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Gone Girl? Five. Are you sure Four. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo is nominated? Three. Two. Let's go with two. two. All righty. So that is a two-point steal for Killer Chemistry. Huge steal. Nice. All right. All right. Big picture. Your awesome. final question to come within two or one. Out of Africa, Howard's End, and Brokeback Mountain all won which Oscar? Uh, two of them definitely won Best Director. So you want to just go say Best Director? Yeah. I know I know. Out of Africa won. Yeah. And I know, okay, let's go Best Director, final answer. That is incorrect. Killer Chemistry. Look, yeah. Isn't it Best it's Screenplay? I think it's best original screenplay. No, they're all not, they're all based on something. Oh, it's, yeah, okay, adapted. Fuck. Best, best adapted final screenplay. Answer or... Did you say right, final answer? Four, three, two. Best you gotta talk screen better. Screen. All right, and that is correct for a two point steal. Yeah. Ooh, big steal. That's wow. Was oh, that five? Is that five points now? Uh, six. Oh, it's a six point lead. Six point gap. All righty, so moving on to round four. Similar to round three, where we gave the competitors and teams a chance to choose their own category, now we let them make a decision on their own, but it is for their opponent. We, we came to the decision, if you want to be a champion, you need to be able to do your research and know your opponent. So we asked both teams to research their opponents through their ins and outs and come up with a weakness. For them, they chose a category, any that they wanted. But there were two stipulations. One, it either had to be a category that has been talked about before in There Will Be Trivia, or if it's about an actor or director, at least one question had to come up pertaining one of their movies. So, Killer Chemistry, once again, you are in the lead. Would you like to go first or second? Here, I think we let them go first. Yeah, let's let's go second. We need to see what we need to get up to. All right, big picture, you are going first. Case, can you read down the questions for? Box office. Box office. You said no stealing, right? There's no, no stealing. stealing in this round, no. Okay. So and you do have multiple, multiple choice. choice. Okay. But if uh, if you don't know it, then uh, there is no steals. All right, okay. big picture, your first category is, uh, your first question in category of box office. What is domestically the highest grossing movie in the Alien franchise? Is that, is that, Prometheus, do you think, or is it Prometheus well, or Alien? Is this, is this accounting for inflation? No, 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 no inflation. Okay, okay. So it wouldn't be Alien, I don't think. Yeah, no, I don't. Five, it's, is it Aliens or four, Prometheus? Three, two. So Prometheus, final answer. For two points. That's correct. Two points. <laughs> Next question in box office: What is the highest-grossing movie of 1994 domestically? Is that Forrest, Forrest Gump? Lion, I reckon Lion King. Lion King. Oh, domestically. Is that uh, like that year or up until now? Uh, just that year. Just of that year. No no re-releases, no I inflation, just that year. It's, oh, fuck. Is it either, it's either Forrest Gump or Lion King. I, I think reckon, we got Because Forrest Gump five, only made like 400 million four, together okay. or some shit. Let's go to Lion King, Two. final answer. That's that incorrect. incorrect. It was, we in fact, for Forrest Gump. Gump. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Fuck. All right. Your third question in box office. What 2017 movie set the current record for the biggest opening weekend in September? Is that it, you think? So, yeah, are you sure it came out in September? Oh, that's a good question. That, but what, Kings, what else would it Kingsman, be? Kingsman came out in September, didn't it? Yes, um, Kingsman's Golden Circle. Um, five, if it's if it four, did come out in September, it's that. Three, I can go uh, two. It final right. answer. Final answer. For, for two points. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> go, let's go, let's All go. All right, guys. Uh, if you get this one, uh, you tie the game. Uh, of course, if you get it on two pointer. What is the highest grossing movie worldwide of 2006? 2006. The, uh, okay, so the, de the Departed is possible. Is there any animated you can think of? Five. Sorry. 
four, three. Multiple choice. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, multiple choice. Options are A, X-Men The Last Stand, B, The Da Vinci Code, C, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, or D, Cars. It's worldwide. Oh. It's probably worldwide, pirates, yes. Though. Although I don't pirates know, are no, I know, I know for a fact pirates made a billion. Did cars okay. make a billion? Let's go. I don't think it five. made a billion. Let's go. See final points. answer. See that points. is correct for a one point. Okay. Okay. All right. Twenty-two to twenty-one going into Killer Chemistries, and Killer Chemistry Big Picture did their research and they decided that you would be weak at Yui Bowl movies. Not necessarily. See. Alrighty, remember you can opt for multiple choice and we will not accept an answer until final answer. Yui okay. Bowl. Who does Dr. Mangler want to inject with Rain's blood in Blood Rain? Who does he want to inject blood? Are you looking for a specific character? Yeah, character. Yeah. Yeah. I think we gotta take that to multiple choice. Uh, yeah, five. Multiple choice. choice. All right. Is it A, a child who is the Antichrist? B, army of super soldiers? C, Hitler? Or D, his wife? That is not specific. That is not a specific character. I think it's his wife. Uh, yeah, that's fine. His wife. Final answer. That is incorrect. We were looking for Hitler. I thought that sure. was a tip off. Yeah, that's why the specific character yeah. did matter there. Really? All right, your second question. Who plays okay, candidate okay. Wells in Postal? No, God. Um, it's, have uh, you seen Postal? Yeah, it's... Um, I didn't see it. It's Zach, uh, Zach somebody is the main guy. And then the, uh, it's all, it's uh, Five, Tom Arnold, I think. Four. That sounds decent. Tom Arnold. Two. Multiple choice. Multiple choice. All right, is it A, Dave Foley? B, J.K. Simmons? C, Zach Ward, or D, Chris Spencer? Okay, so it's oh, either Foley or uh, Zach Ward. I think it's Foley because Zach Ward was like the, the main guy, so I'm pretty sure it's Dave Foley. Go with Foley, then. Dave Foley, final answer. That is incorrect. We were looking for everyone's mean band teacher, J.K. Simmons. Oh, uh, I, I didn't know he was in the movie. He must have been in debt. <laughs> Your third question. What was the first Yui Bowl movie to have been released in theaters? Is that Alone in the Dark? Is that what? Is that Alone in the Dark? I think it's either Alone in the Dark or House of the Dead. Uh, your call. I don't know. Uh, we're going to go with Alone in the Dark, final answer. That is incorrect. It actually was House of the Dead. <laughs> All right, your final question with a current 22 to 21 lead going into or right before round five. What is the name of Jason Statham's character in the in the name of the king, a dungeon siege tale? Any idea? It's a it's like uh, it's a it's a it's a, it's like farmer or something, right? Farmer? Isn't it farmer? I have not seen in the name of the king. I'm going to I think I'm going to go with farmer. What do you think? Right. Go for it. Armor. Final answer. That is correct <laughs> for two points. Nice. Baby. Oh, wow. With that being yeah. said, we are going into round five of the championship Jesus. match of There Will Be Trivia Team Tournament with Killer Chemistry <laughs> up 24 to 21. Here is how round five is going to go. Case, take it away. All right, well, round five is now the IMDb round, as we all know. And the IMDb round is a little different, as you saw in the singles match uh, as well. Um, they will still, uh, both teams will still get a, a two-pointer, a three-pointer, and a five-pointer. For the two-pointer, they get the year, then decide between themselves who will answer that, and then get the genres and actor combination. The other teammate will then get the three-pointer, where they get the year, the director, and the keywords. And they have to name the movie, of course. And for the five-pointer, this is a little different. They get the year, and based off that, they can collaborate and decide if they want actor, director, co-lead actor, and plot keywords. Because nobody ever chose genres. That's why we changed here, it. And here is the rule with co-lead. It is anyone in the top five billing of the movie. So sometimes it could be any of those, depending on discretion. So oh. just keep that. 
Is there a specific right. way that you decide that, like screen time or just kind of whatever? Yeah, kind of just it's, depends it's, on it's the movie. It's just if that person is known for the movie, we'll okay. include it. It's not some kind of random ass actor. Or if that it's has a well known actor, then we might use that over a lesser yeah. known actor to be easier or vice versa. So, yeah. Okay. That's how it goes. So the example I use just for you guys so you can feel comfortable, if it was, it's not clearly. If it was Pulp Fiction, you could easily do Sam Jackson and John Travolta, or you could do Sam Jackson and Bruce Willis or Bing Rames. They're clearly known for the movie, so it just depends on that movie. Yeah. So, okay. Or or if two actors are in the same movie in the same year, we would do a different actor to avoid confusion. So you know what I'm saying? Okay. There's multiple there's multiple things going into it. All uh, right. Killer chemistry. Killer you chemistry. You guys numbers. are in the lead. Would you please choose movie number one or movie number two? Okay. All right. Movie number three or movie number four? Three. three. All right. And movie number five or movie number six? Plus three is five. Let's get a five. All right. All right. So we are going to start Quick off mass. with big Quick picture. Mass. They are going to have to hit their two and their three or at least their three to jump it back over to Killer Chemistry. Mm-hmm. I'll go ahead and read it to Big Picture. Big Picture, you were given movie number one. Your year is 1974. Which one of you two would like it? Actor and oh. genres. Michael, would you I'll feel just... comfortable with that? Yeah, like, yeah, okay. I'll just take it. Okay. All right, hey, you got this. You got this, bud. All right, for Michael only. Your year is 1974. Your genres, action, adventure, and thriller. And your actor, Roger Moore. Greg knows it. And five, four, three, two. For your eyes only. Man with the golden gun. Man with the golden gun. Paul, it bounces over to you, and now you have the opportunity to tie the game. You were given movie number four. Is 1984. Your plot keywords, singer, motorcycle gang leader, and kidnapping. And your director, Walter Hill. So 84. Kidnapping. Um, Streets of Fire, final answer. Tie game! All right, Greg. You chose actor once again. Your year is 2009. Your genres, action, adventure, and family. And your actor, Dwayne Johnson. Doesn't nine, action, adventure, family, Dwayne Johnson. Not like I did a lot of those during that time. Five. Let's with the uh, race to which mountain? <laughs> For two lead. Fuck. Yes. Fuck. Come on. All right. Big picture. Your five pointer movie number six. You have to hit this to stay alive. It was released in 1983. Choose yeah, two. From actor, actor, actor keywords, Michael. Yeah, actor, actor keywords. Okay, that's actor done. Yeah, that's and yeah. keywords. All right. Yeah. Again. Released in 1983, your actor is Walter Matthau, and the plot keywords are Fired by the Boss's Parrot, Bar Robbery, and Extremist Walter Group's Matthew. Training Camp. Extremist Group's... I think this is that movie with Robin Williams that he did, also, Michael? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Two repeat left, if you want to. I think it's... Mm-hmm. Sir. Repeat, repeat. All right. 1983, main actor is Walter Matthau, and the plot keywords are Fired by the Boss's Pet, Bar Robbery, and Extremist Group's Training Camp. Uh, there's, I know what it is, Michael. I know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. There, I think it's called The Survivors. Just... I think it's called The Survivors. So you want one more repeat? Just so... Uh, yeah, one more repeat just in case. All right. Yeah. 19, eight, 1983... The main actor is Walter Matthau, and the plot keywords are Fired by the Boss's Parrot, Bar Robbery, and Extremist Group's Training Camp. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Survivor's final answer. 
Five, Five points. points! Let's fucking go! Luca, you have the three-pointer, which was movie number three, and it was released in 2009. Uh-huh. The plot keywords are motel, struggling with identity, and musicians, and it was directed by Ang Lee. What is that movie called? You have one repeat left if you need it. Is it? Five. Four. Three. Searching for Two. Sugar Man? It's incorrect. We will look at Woodstock. Taking Woodstock. Oh, Woodstock. So it comes down to the to five pointer. Five pointer. If they hit it, they are the champions. If they miss it, Big Picture is the champion. Movie number five was released in 2012. Pick two of actor, director, co-lead, and keywords. Do we want actor and keywords, Greg? Uh, actor, keywords, or we can do uh, director, co-director. I mean, director, co-actor. I want either actor, keywords, or actor, co-actor. Just think of what we've been doing, do actor, keywords. Actor keywords, let's go. Again, it was released in 2012. Your keywords are homeless shelters, absent father, and hopeful writer, and your main actress, Paul Dano. You have one repeat left. I'm going to need it because I don't, I didn't, uh, did you hear the third part? The actor is Paul Dano. Um, That's, repeat, uh, repeat. Keyword. Okay, keywords. your last repeat. The keywords, uh, it was released in 2012. Keywords are homeless shelter, absent father, and hopeful writer. And the actor is Paul Dano. I don't know it, Greg. Is that the one with, like, uh... <sighs> Jeff Bridges, or... Who was the main... It was, like, a older actor, like, Kevin Clark. Or... I don't, Three, know. I don't know. Two. One. The new team champion. Big picture. Wow, Chase, we have our very first team champion. I I I I don't know how I feel. I created this, I had I came uh-huh. up with the idea for this tournament. We didn't even know if it was going to happen. I had another co-host at the time. We we started this. It came down. Oh my god! Like I just oh holy cow! I I, I want to say more, but I just kind of want to rebound off of what the competitors say. So let's go from there and uh, yeah, let let's hear. Let's you. introduce the question writer, the head question writer for the OB Trivia, Jeremy the Adam Adams. He's going to ha- go ahead and interview Big Picture and Killer Chemistry right now. All right. So first question. First of all, congratulations, Big Picture. You have won the very first team tournament for Barrel Trivia post-merger. Let's just start off with, what are your first thoughts, one at a time, Paul, on being champions? I mean, this is fucking crazy. I don't know how the hell that happened. Um, I definitely thought we lost that game. They were answering their three to tie and their five to win. And with killer chemistry, that basically spells sudden, like certain death. Uh, so honestly, I don't even know how this happened really uh we literally scored zero points in our strength round and we somehow beat the most dominant team this league has ever seen so i have no idea honestly. and michael yeah we we went up against a team that literally pitched a perfect game like no no multiple choice round two or anything they they like they did not miss a question they got every point they could have and we beat them somehow it's it's literally it is fucking crazy to think about i mean honestly it it just comes down to i think they just they made a big fuck up in choosing our weakness um box office is just not a weakness of ours like by any stretch so i think that that was like the biggest decision that really cost them since we ended up with i believe five points in that round um and they only scored two in their weakness round so i just think that they weren't really prepared and didn't understand the team that they were facing i guess but i mean honestly though all credit to them they played an incredible match um it was down to the wire. They beat us. They outscored us in almost every round. And like, yeah, the last two rounds were where we pulled ahead. 
Uh, speaking of that, they, you say that if you were to do an instant rematch, which obviously that's not how it's going to go, but there's a chance that you will have a rematch, do you feel nervous or do you feel more confident knowing that you can beat them? Michael, what do you think first? Um, I feel confident that we can beat them, but I know... Because we basically just swapped our strength and weakness round. Like, we got nothing in strength, we got points in the weakness, so that would kind of be a wash. But I'd actually be pretty confident because, like, we beat them. They were the fucking giants of the league, the team everyone feared, and, you know, just little all us beat them. So I'd, I'd be pretty confident. Paul? Well, yeah, I think that... It's it's kind of like, the, like when like when Mike Tyson first lost to Buster Douglas, like you realize that they're human, and I think that like ha ha like having actually beat them and having seen that actually happen, I think that instills a, a sort of confidence into us. And I, there's no way we were gonna get zero points in a in a strength round again. So I just think that like I don't know. I would personally feel really confident going into the going into any sort of rematch with them or a match against any other team, frankly, for the belt. That leads me to my next question. Uh, what did you guys think of the format with the uh, regular whiteboard round, the, the wheel round with no strengths, round three being all strengths, round four being a research slash weakness round, and then round five being pretty much the MDB round with a slight change, adding co-actor instead of genres. What do you think overall as a whole for the championship format, Paul? Well, I think it's funny because the format actually served us well, but I'm honestly like not the biggest fan of the strength weakness thing. I think that sort of like takes away a bit from round two. Um, I don't know what I would necessarily substitute in its place, but I I, I do say that like the strength weakness round I'm I'm kind of iffy on. I I don't love especially the weakness round as like an idea. Michael? I understand like the concept, but yeah. Michael? Yeah, I would actually kind of like it for like the championship match. You know, it's it can either. <laughs> Oh, maybe in a couple months when it actually legit fucks us, I won't be saying that, but, you know. <laughs> but yeah, for now, I like it. For now, yeah. It's good. So, go, let's, let's go into it. Um, round one, um, Paul, you definitely had a pretty good match, and then Michael, you definitely were on par with what you're used to doing. So you, as a team, you guys didn't really, you know, deter from there. Round two, you guys did pretty good. And then round three and four, as we know, that's just a little different. So it could be just the first time doing it, maybe. And then round five is the end to be right. Is there anything in this match that you felt that you could have changed, would have changed, or are going to work on in the future? As a team. Honestly, like, paying attention to the questions, I think with some of the questions, I just, like, like, with the terms of endearment, I literally, like, misheard the questions, so I had, had like, a completely ridiculous answer. Um, but I guess just being more mindful of stuff like that, and I wouldn't change our strength. Like, if we went to another match with Oscars, our strength, I'd personally feel really confident that we could score a lot of points. It was just, like, we hit some really random-ass questions. But I think strategy-wise, I think... We have to stop like thinking there's one more movie when they're asking for a number, because um, like with the Fincher thing, like I knew that it was two, and then when Michael said three with the girl with the dragon tattoo, I, I sort of started to doubt myself, and I think I should have just went with what I knew and not just been like, oh, I'm sure there's another one. So yeah. I don't know how I'm like, oh. yeah, that's that's basically what I gotta do. I just gotta stop assuming there's more, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I wouldn't really change anything strategy wise. Maybe you know. I'm, Happy we went with uh, you know, active keywords for the five pointer. You know that's worked for us the whole this whole tournament, and yeah. you know it hasn't <laughs> haven't hasn't failed us yet. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I thought I thought we were sunk personally after we like fucked up the Forrest Gump question and the David Fincher question. Those <laughs> questions are gonna we're gonna absolutely haunt me if we lost this match because I literally said the answer like, the correct answer right away, and then we talked ourselves out of it. So that would have been brutal. Yeah. Uh, also going going into that, do you think that um, your confidence as a team, like, for example, say you get something in the two-pointer of the year, do you have confidence that maybe Paul could take the two-pointer and then Michael could later on take the three-pointer, or do you think that you guys just have a strategy, you know, it just, you know, however you guys go about it, do you, do you feel a certain way going in, or do you think certain things in the match could deter you, and you'd have to change up your strategy? Well, I think there are definitely, like, like there, are ca there are cases where we would switch, I think, but I think just so far, like, it's made sense. For Michael to yeah. take the actor and me to take the director. Um, I would personally feel confident with either of us taking either one, but I think that like with me being like marginally better at director than I am at actor, I think it's just more important um, for me yeah. to take the director question. So yeah. Yeah, like we've we've discussed this like like Paul said. In some cases, maybe Paul will take the two and I'll take the three. But 
yeah, it just hasn't happened. And with the championship match and the questions are generally harder, I would feel more comfortable with Paul taking the director than, than me. So, yeah, and that's, I'm pretty fine with that. It's worked. So yeah. Super comfortable. And that leads me to my final question. You guys have had five matches so far as a team. Originally, you guys didn't even have any, you know, team up or preparation going into this tournament because it was a last minute thing that you guys filled in yes you guys are friends behind the scenes but as far as actually as a team you guys hadn't had that rapport yet so how do you guys feel now at being 5-0 and having five matches going through an entire tournament over a span of six months do you guys feel amazing going forward do you still feel like there's just plenty of stuff that you could work on well i mean we can definitely uh, still yeah. get better like i know that like i know people might not think this, but Michael is way better a player than like three points in round one, and I think that like he'll show that in matches moving forward. Um, but as a team, I've always felt confident about ourselves. Uh, I think we fit together really well, and we complement each other um, gameplay wise. And I think we just have like really good chemistry. I think that's something that kind of sets us apart from some of the other teams who may be good players. But I think that we're just like really in sync with each other. Yeah, definitely, yeah, Michael. We really, like we discuss like every scenario over discuss it just in case <laughs> like it's it's probably a waste of time ultimately but you know you never know and yeah it's crazy that like we made our debuts overall in any t in any league with this tournament and and now like yeah a couple months later we damn near lost our first match like we yeah. definitely could have lost our first match that was the yeah. closest match we had which is kind of hilarious <laughs> yeah so you guys put you guys played the marauders then you guys played Big um, Take Three. Then you played um, True Bromance, and then you played Omega Club, and then you played Care Chemistry. That's all five, right? Yeah. Yeah. Out of those five teams, who do you think was the toughest opponent? What match was the most fun? And what match do you want to have an instant rematch if you could? If it was up to you guys, Michael, what about? Let's go with you first. Um, well, the toughest opponent. I'm not gonna get like cute. Still, Care Chemistry. Like that's especially in a championship <laughs> match. There, the the longer like the extra rounds kind of helped us versus yeah. the chemistry in a normal three round match, you know, that things can be very different. But the toughest match overall was probably the bromance match just because of how brutal it was for like everyone. Like it was, we, we actually probably should have lost that match, but they missed two and three and some crazy shit happened. Yeah. And so yeah, killer chemistry though for me is still the like number one team to look out for. Yeah. Paul, what do you think? I mean, yeah, like, 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 I was literally gonna say the exact thing, same thing as Michael. Like, you could try to get cute and say, like, oh, the Marauders, because, like, we only lost, like, we only beat them in sudden death, but Killer Chemistry is the best thing we played in the tournament uh, by, like, a pretty decent margin. Um, and that's the team I'd probably look forward to, look forward least to playing again. And I'm sure we probably will end up playing them again very soon. So, um, that's definitely the, the, the toughest one. Um, I don't know, with our first couple matches were fun. I, had a lot of fun with the take three match personally just because i did really well but like <laughs> honestly like i had fun with pretty much all these matches um but yeah the, the bromance one is super agonizing uh we played really poorly um yeah like michael said we probably should have lost that match to be quite honest like and then they just missed their two and their three which is really like what it came down to yeah but definitely. i'm confident in our next killer chemistry match because paul is getting a perfect round one because it's five eight five eight Literally, five yeah. next Next round one, he's getting eight. So, yeah. it's science. It's science. All right. There you go. You guys know each other. So, with that being said, I just want to say for all of Verbi Trivia and Worldwide Movie Games, congratulations for being our very first team champion. And I can't wait to see you guys defend your titles and also just get back out there in the regular season and, you know, see if that pressure is going to be there and see if you guys can be the face of this league as far as team-wise. So, congratulations and, you know, talk to you guys later. All right, Killer Chemistry. So as you guys can see, we're in different locations because we wanted to take some time and let this sink in because this was an unfortunate loss for these two competitors. Two competitors that going in were favorites, going in were considered monstrous opponents and feared throughout the entire league, and they got defeated at the last second. And without getting into specifics, there were some behind-the-scenes stuff that went down that also... I wanted to let it sink in for these competitors so they can totally tr say what they feel but not you know lash out and say anything they might regret so now that some time is some now that time now that some time has passed hello killer chemistry luca and greg let's start off with luca um what are just your first initial thoughts knowing that you've had some time to reflect on the situation and this loss and go from there and you can also at this point talk about the singles if you'd like to just because it's, it's at this point of this airing that it's there. So whatever you want to talk about, what yeah. are your thoughts in this day and age? Yeah. So I mean, like I've had I've had a little bit of time to um, 
to look at uh, how this week in general went for me, um, which we know now, uh, not great, yeah. actually. Uh, not, not a fantastic week uh, for me, and there will be trivia. Um, I wasn't happy with how either of the matches went for me personally, um, but uh, the singles final, uh, I feel like, was just a matter of... I didn't know the movies that were asked about or I didn't know the specific answers to the specific questions that were asked about um, so that's on me uh, with this one I feel like there's a little bit obviously more of the technical stuff that's kind of been uh, been harassing us uh, uh, some kind of really weird specific vague stuff with uh, actor filmographies um, not in uh, anything that I would necessarily like uh, would uh, sort of cry foul about but um, it was just a matter of like we got really unlucky today um, or uh, we got really unlucky on the final today. Um, in general, uh, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot, of, there's a lot about this that uh, it's kind of uh, feels a lot of different ways for me. Uh, people will know that uh, the finals week happened in my finals week, um, and obviously, I think that had quite a bit to do with things. Um, and you know, I just spent a little bit of time, and I was feeling really deflated, uh, and I was kind of, you know, going to the point of like questioning why necessarily I was doing this for a while. Um, but I, I um, interestingly, I went back and I watched my first match against Brian Fernandez um, in the old Devil Be Trivia uh, season two. Um, and watching that match, uh, and watching just kind of how much fun I was having and how much I was enjoying myself, kind of lit a bit of a spark under my ass. Um, so uh, I think that uh, you know when when my double defeat happened. Uh, I was feeling really down, but at this point, I'm just like, hand me Team Ades, hand me Jen Kemp on a plate, because by God, Killer Chemistry is going to have two belts. I swear to fucking God, Killer Chemistry is going to have two belts, whether it's, you know, and the next finals match when I'm in the singles and me and Greg are in the teams again, or further down the line, I'm going to have one belt here, one belt here. And this belt is going to be uh, Killer Chemistries, and this belt is also going to be for Killer Chemistry, because I wouldn't have fucking gotten here without Greg. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I do not feel good about the way my finals went at all. Uh, but fucking bring on the next challenge. Um, there will be trivia, will be the butcher, and there will be a very, very hard time for anyone else trying to get to those fucking belts, because God damn it, you would not like me when I'm angry. <laughs> Alrighty, Greg. So as we just heard from Luca a little bit, um, his potential, you know, reasoning for having a bad week was because of finals and school. Do you think that the word of you going to China real soon might have had your head out of the game? That that's even still going on? You know, like do you think that would affected it, or do you think overall it was just one of those matches that just didn't go your way, and there's really no reason behind it? It just was one of, a bad game. Well, first, I just want to point out that I am in the exact same location wearing the exact same shirt because I haven't moved in a week because of this damn match. <laughs> I have been glued to this bed for a full week, waiting for this interview, digesting this match. That's not true. I had to do Battleground afterwards, and that sucked. But with the whole, whole match of so much shit and stuff I could talk about and so many things but I'll keep it pretty simple and not as accusatorily as people would think uh, it was a good match, big picture fought uh, very well uh, they were obviously great competitors um, there were a couple things I would like back uh, I would like our strength uh, strength round back for sure um uh, I uh, I convinced Luca to go in a different direction, which I think might have been a bad idea, retro speak, uh, retroactively speaking. Uh, we should have went with the first idea we had. Uh, that was on me. Um, luckily, it worked out because both of us, both teams, ended up sucking in the strength round. <laughs> so got some good, got some, got some good steals there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, luckily we. Uh, uh, it worked out very well for us, and uh, uh, we we got back in the uh, uh, weakness round. So uh, I'm glad I knew more stuff about Uwe Bowl than I thought. <laughs> uh, although I still think some of those questions, you know, I'm going to ask 
going to ask about postal and no, the guy you ask about signing on the damn poster, which is bullcrap. Um, but uh, uh, regarding the ending and how it went, uh, we fought a hell of a match considering the circumstances. Luca and myself were put in. Uh, I'm obviously not using that excuse because I think we still should have won for a myriad of reasons. Um, I'm uh, hesitant to want to just go full on burn down everything because fuck I'm going to China eventually so I was like just fucking fire blast everything to the brim but I can understand how tough uh, the job is I can understand how uh, this isn't obviously the main focus of people's lives. People do have jobs. They do have families. Uh, they do have personal lives that they want to partake in. So I can understand how some of the things that happened happened. With the with the obvious caveat of hindsight. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a uh, not the not the match. Obviously, we wanted, but as Lucas said. There will be more trivia. This is true. So uh, we, we got a lot of words from you guys. Now, Greg, you are saying you are going to China. Personally, I'm not sure how that how long that's going to be. How, how is that and the uh, results of this match going to affect you guys as a team going forward? And any future plans, whether it's positive, negative, or neutral, what are your guys' uh, plans as a team? Well, I'll just do a China thing, and then Luca can just the team thing. Uh, yeah, uh, for people who don't know, I'm eventually uh, moving to China here in the next few weeks. Uh, I'll be there for a minimum of a year. Um, my uh, obvious uh, input availability will be lessened due to not only time zone difficulties. Uh, I mean, we see how difficult it is with just people here in the U.S. and my buddy Luke over here in London. Uh, so add another eight, nine, ten hours onto that. Um, and uh, also with, uh, I don't know the uh, issue with China uh, and Internet. I know they have their uh, own little things. That'll be interesting That's to figure out. Um, considering it can be figured out, uh, I obviously believe this is a great team. Uh, we've proven that, uh, obviously, by getting to the finals uh, and... Uh, winning it, or we're not winning it. However, you want to go about it. Um, but yes, uh, oh, Luca. Holy shit! First. We're fucking. Hello. Oh no. Luca. Um. So I guess in regards to killer chemistry as a team, what I want to say is points record, one hundred percent accurate match, team finals. China is a pretty. Pretty big place, pretty powerful government, um, but they're not going to keep killer chemistry down. Like, if there's any chance of killer chemistry continuing, we are going to be continuing. Uh, uh, this is still believe the best team in the league. Um, we're going to take this shit by storm. All righty, killer chemistry. So, uh, last, last I want to say is congratulations for making it this far to the tournament. Congratulations for stay, sticking together as a team through tough times, and congratulations for moving forward in your future endeavors as a team because we all know that you guys have a chemistry that is killer and envious and most people want to be like you and most people want to be you so we're not going to see the end of you guys regardless of what China's going to bring for us and I can't wait to get there so this is Henry Confidential saying thank you to Luca Fallon and Greg Yastin Weinstein and time to get back to our regular scheduled program congratulations to Big Picture the second best team in this league <laughs> All right, everybody. So that was a lot of fun and kind of heartbreaking to see those post-match interviews. So congratulations, as always, to the champion, Big Picture. And unfortunate, just there's nothing we can say except for good luck in the in the number one contenders match for Killer Chemistry. We can tell that they are truly upset and heartbroken and angry. But guess what? They can use that as motivation and momentum going into the next match. Case, what are your thoughts? I mean, Killer Chemistry, they fuel on hatred. Every, every little bit of um, yeah, uh, knock they get against them, that just fuels, uh, that's fueled to the fire for them and that gets them uh, going in the next match, I think. But I, I just have to say, big congratulations 
to everyone involved in this tournament. We got here to the finals. Big Picture won it. Huge congratulations to them. They're the deserved champions. They've shown that in every single match of this, this tournament. Killer Chemistry deserved to be their opponent. They could have won it at one point. I honestly thought they would. Uh, they didn't. They came so close, though, and they'll they'll come back. I know they will come back uh, pretty soon. So, yeah, I, I this is amazing. This is still I, I can't really fully comprehend what happened, but I just know that I love being a part of this, and this was an amazing tournament. And thank thank you all, everyone. Thank you so much for supporting us because the support means so much, and it's just great to see how many people are involved in all of this. Yeah, so, definitely. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, and it's just, it's just, uh, it's so much fun doing this, and it's, it's kind of sad that that it's over. But hey, now we get to do regular season matches. We get to see people mm. that we haven't seen yet. We get to see people get a second chance. Some own one players, yeah. some own one teams, and we have champions now. We have two champions, and there will be trivia. But officially, we are at the end, and we are officially at the new beginning of a league because these tournaments were kind of like the starting point. Like, hey, let's let's get something going. But it took six months, so this league is legit and we have two champions now so let's go get the regular season hopefully you guys like the graphics thank you once again to mm. chris clark who is letting us who did this match for us and he put this together because without him we wouldn't have this new layout and hopefully this uh translates until the new season and everything looks great and we're just trying to up the quality because we know that the content is there we just want the quality to match it so we can have a lot of fun so everybody i am henry confidential this is There Will Be Trivia Team Tournament. The singles is over, and now we're moving forward into the regular season to get as much going on because we're going to have teams, singles, and geek. So we are going to have the There Will Be Trivia Team Division, Singles Division, and Geek Division. So we have plenty of content out there for you guys. Hopefully mm -hmm. the quality is going to continue to match it because you already know the players are going to be there, the writing is going to be there, and the competition is going to be there. So once again, signing off, I am Henry Confidential, and you are... The Grand Admiral Case Cornelison. And this is There Will Be Trivia. Come back for next season and let us know everything in this video. Like, comment, share, and check out our other content on the Worldwide Movie Games Network. And just keep taking it. <laughs>